Hi everyone, it's Erin from the Provincial Farmhouse. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm creating a French country sign using IUD transfers and stamps. You can find a full product list in the description of this video and all your crafting needs on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. I found this sign at the thrift store for just $3 and I knew it would be perfect for a project I've been wanting to do with one of IOD's transfers. After cleaning, my first step is to apply two coats of Dixie Belle's Endless Shore Silk Mineral Paint. Silk Mineral Paint has a built-in stain blocker, so it's going to help block out all of those letters and any stains that I can't see. And it's also going to seal my project so that it is protected and ready for the next step. I want this sign to have a rustic vintage feel, so I'm actually speeding up the drying process on the second coat here with a hairdryer. That is going to make my brush strokes a bit more visible, and I want that because it actually simulates the look of wood and distressing, so we're just going to give it a little bit of help. Once my paint's dry, I'm using IOD's Barnwood Plank Stamp Set. You can use these stamps with ink, but today I'm using some of Dixie Belle's Chocolate Chalk Mineral Paint. So I'm pouring out a little bit of that into a container here. And then I am actually going to lighten this color a little bit by adding some of Dixie Belle's Cotton Chalk Mineral Paint. It's a lovely bright white. So I'm going to mix those together really well. And I've put it in this container because I'm going to be using a brayer. So I needed a container that was wide enough that I could fit my brayer in there. And you can see I've also got my paper towel off to the side because we're going to use that to do some offloading of the product. So I've got the plank that I want to use. I'm getting some paint on my brayer. I'm offloading onto the paper towel and then I'm going to run my brayer over the top of my stamp. I'm getting just enough paint on my stamp. You don't want to overdo it and then I'm very carefully flipping it over and we're going to start down the bottom. I'm positioning it and then pressing it down. So I don't want to go too heavy here but I do want it to look like it's painted wood that's weathered and the darker brown is the wood showing underneath. This was just an MDF piece so it didn't have any of that fun wood that I could sand back so this is why we're creating it with IOD stamps. So here I've actually flipped the design over so I want the marks on the wood going a different direction. I want this to look like it's a bunch of different old wood that's been put together to create this sign. In the Barnwood Planks stamp set, you get a lot of different wood designs to choose from. I like this one because it's a bit more subtle and because we're putting letters over the top of this, I don't want that wood look to overpower the sign. I want it to be a background that's not going to distract from our main design. So I'm just working my way across until I have covered the entire thing with the wood stamp. The final touch for this part is to add the little nail design. So it's going to look like different planks that have been joined together. So I'm adding just a little bit of paint to those and then I'm just going to randomly add those in three different sections. Once my paint is dry, I'm going to be adding the Stores and Harrison Co transfer. This is an older one, it is retired, but I've been wanting to use this for so long. It is a longer design. It's separated into two separate parts. So I am going to have to adapt this because my sign isn't the perfect length. So I am going to have to adapt it and cut out certain parts. The first part I'm gonna cut out is the extra lettering on the end. I can use that on another project in the future. It's not going to go away so I'll roll that up and store that away for later and then I need to work out how I can fit in as much text as possible and I did decide pretty early on that I would remove the end um, the ampersand symbol because I just didn't feel like we needed it. I don't think it has to have that there. I think it will look like a complete design without it and that way I can get more of my lettering in. So I've trimmed the first part apart and now I'm going to take the rows down the bottom and I'm going to separate that from the text as well. So I really am going to be turning this into a bit more of a custom look and I hope that this is showing you that you can do that, that you can adapt a transfer to suit your project and that you can create something a bit more unique by doing this. 
I am keeping in mind that border on the top and the border down the bottom as I'm laying this all out. So now it's time to start transferring my design. I've peeled off the plastic sheet and now I'm laying the carrier sheet down and just making sure I've got equal amount of space up the top and down the bottom. As you can see on the left, I have got it overlapping a bit. We're going to lose that border on the left but that's okay and I'm coming in now with my transfer stick and I am burnishing the whole design to start off with just so I've got it stuck down really well and then once I have it all stuck down I'm going to pick a corner and I'm going to get started. This was a bit time consuming I have to say. There were a lot of small parts in this design but I did manage to get a few good runs where I had parts of the transfer coming up really really quickly. The main parts that were a bit trickier were the roses just so I could make sure that I had all of that stuck down and again if you miss a spot you just put your sheet back down do a little bit more burnishing and away you go. So I have sped up this part because it did take me quite a while to get all of this transferred down but it was so worth it. This is such a beautiful design. I'm a bit sad that they've retired it actually so if you can get your hands on this one before they're completely gone I really would because I just think it is such a fun and easy way for you to create your own sign so here you can see I did trim off some of the border up the top and now I'm adding that second uh, word there the first part of Harrison and again I'm just working my way through lifting the carrier sheet as I go and burnishing my design down so I'm adding the end transfer there and you can see again on the right hand side that I am going to have some of the design coming off. I do actually very carefully trim that because you never know when you could use a partial piece of transfer. So I have saved that just in case I find a use for it in the future. Now I'm adding the rose for the center. I do have a little bit of overlap on the other design, but that's okay. Uh, it just adds to the uniqueness of it really. So again, burnishing it down down and then using that carrier sheet to rub the design. Now I'm going to use a craft knife and I'm running it along the little gap that's in between each of my boards there. So I'm pressing straight down because I want to separate the transfer so that I can make sure that each piece is stuck down really well. I wouldn't want some grit to get underneath that and start lifting up the transfer. So I always do this if we have gaps or if I have drawers that I'm adding transfers to. I'm now using some 220 grit sandpaper and I'm lightly distressing the lettering. I want to have it look a bit faded, a bit worn, and I'm also going around the edges of the sign as well. And I'm pulling back some of that paint so that that uh, brown tone of the MDF can show through. After removing the sanding dust, I'm going to seal the entire sign with some of Dixie Belle's gloss clear coat. Even though my silk paint has the built-in sealer, we want to seal that transfer in. The clear coat is also an important base for adding my glaze, which is coming next. If you know me, you know I love Dixie Belle's Grunge Glaze. This is going to give it a really subtle antique look. So I'm brushing it on here with a chip brush and then I'm wiping it back with a paper towel. If you want to wipe a bit more back, you could use a wet wipe or a mister to water down your glaze. So I've just worked on one half of the sign at a time. You don't want to work in too big of an area because it could dry before you have a chance to wipe it back. You could also use a paint wash or a brown wax for this step. Finally, I'm going to add some hooks to the back of my sign. I'm just pre-drilling some little holes for my screws and then I'm actually going to use a screwdriver to screw the hooks into place. I just find that sometimes with these little screws that I can burr them if I'm using my drill. This sign has a bit of weight to it, so I've added a hook on the left-hand side and also on the right-hand side to make it a little bit easier for whoever ends up with this lovely sign to hang it on their wall. And here's our finished French country sign. I'm so happy that I finally got to use this beautiful transfer. I love how this turned out. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, comment and share it out to a friend who you think might like it too.
If you haven't already, I would really appreciate it if you would hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of our videos. You can find the products used in today's video on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. Thanks for watching.